Hello friends, welcome to Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. We are here to reflect a little more about things that the Good Spirits find very important. You know, sometimes when we are studying those books and we are meditating on the, the messages, we realize that in any good school, there is a curriculum. And we just wonder, you know, the higher spirits on this planet, according to Jesus' guidance, the curriculum they prepared. When we read these messages from books such as this one by Mei Mei, God awaits, Deus aguarda, we meditate. What kind of class, like what kind of course is this that they are enrolling us? So that's what we're doing in these 21 days. We're taking this summer course together. It's summer course for those who are at summertime. For those who are not at summer, it's winter course. Yay! We love it. It's, I have no doubt. Think about this. Since order is the basis of charity, and order in the universe is inevitable, do you think these books come randomly to from the spiritual realm to us through Chico Xavier? No. They belong to a curriculum. One day, people will make sense of it and study it like we're doing and more because there's so much to extract. There is pretty much like a course on spiritual intelligence, on emotional intelligence, and even a course for our IQ. First in the vocabulary they use, because the words that they use are really very elevated. I remember talking to Divaldo Frank, Raul Teixeira, and many scholars in spiritism, and they used to say that these spirits they're so elevator, elevated. One of the roles of this, ma these many books that they bring to us is actually to um, rescue the depth of our language, which pertains to the capacity of our thinking process. Friends, today we're studying God Awaits, the book by the Spirit of May May, chapter 3. And we are very thankful to our dear Nora Brazil who volunteered to help us. Thank you. God bless you, Nora. And thank you, friends, for being here. Karina Alice, thank you for your help. Yara Goveia, a big hug to you. We are always thankful to you because you gave birth to Fred Goveia. We can't help it but to really find him so adorable, so smart, so it's a joy. Paula, big hug to you. Thank you for joining us. Big hug to Tony, to John De Rosa. How are you? Big hug to Nina. Rihanna, how have you been? What a joy. Sunshine. What a joy to have you all here. So we're forming this current, hoping that people around the world are building up this moment, okay? And we have here with us, can I? Yeah. Yes. Our dear, hey, you know guys, today we had a big cleaning day. <laughs> and I tell you that Carol is here, she survived the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we are joyful, and Carol also helped revise the message so we can share this message today and study together. Are you ready? Yeah. Feel ourselves in the classroom of Jesus. And Jesus says, May, May, I would like you to go there and teach this. Oh, she says, Yes, Master. But before I go, I'm going to say a prayer, she says. 
because the message that she's <laughs> delivering to us is a prayer. Really? Really? Uh-huh. So, it's a prayer. She titled it, Before Others. Uh-huh. Jesus said, go. Go there because Jesus delegates to all of us roles. Uh-huh. So, he is calling you, me, Carol, everyone. He doesn't dismiss anyone. And if people say, no, but me, why me? He says, why not you? Because your child of God too. Right, so so is everyone. Uh-huh. Everyone. No matter who you are, he's the one. Yes, thank you, Jesus, because you taught us about this equality, the equanimity of life. We're learning it. For now, Mimi is praying, teaching us. She comes into the classroom, hugs all of us. Can you imagine? She hugs us and says, friends, we need to pray today. And she says, Lord, teach us to understand the significance of others around us. I'm going to pause because we don't want to go through it without feeling it. Lord, teach us to understand the significance of others. Do we do this? Do we? Do I? I don't know, but we need to evaluate. Let me give an example. If you receive an email from a celebrity, okay? In spiritism nowadays, we have celebrities too. Oh no, but I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's say you receive an email from a Hollywood celebrity or from a politician. Or from, what do you do? You reply right away, you answer the phone, etc. But somebody whom you know, out there in the corner of the world, sends you a message, says, oh, I need so much help. And then, how do you run to help? Or is it like, oh my gosh, one more person in the pipeline of, you know, help. And, or do we understand that this person is as important to God as any other celebrity? What do you think? You see, we're far from it. Mm -hmm. I know people who before they had a certain position in a company or even in the spiritist movement or a spiritist organization people didn't even talk to the person but after they achieved a certain or were asked to fulfill certain roles connected to a certain position people hug take pictures now they are my best friend but before they were not I don't know. It's up to us to evaluate. Today, we were watching, we were cleaning and watching the Pinga Fogo, the program in the Brazilian TV in 1971, in which Chico Xavier was invited to, to talk to the national TV in front of every millions of people. And he said, I am here because I was personally invited by the TV. I am not here representing neither spiritism nor any spiritist organization. Congratulations, Chico Xavier. And he used to, and he said it in front of the TV. Nowadays, we see many people that only go to certain places after they lay out 
that they are there, vouched, backed up by certain spiritist organizations. Do you think Jesus as our guide and model did this? No. Did? No. Why is this important? Because many people are not doing their part because they are waiting for the validation of organizations. If Kardec Radio waited for people to approve of us, we wouldn't be here, friends. We wouldn't. The spirit of South of Baltimore wouldn't have existed. The spirit of of Virginia, the magazine, nothing. Because from the, it's been 20 years that we have people persecuting us, that we have people that are always antagonized because we're doing the works in English. And we're sharing this with you because I know many people who have wonderful talents, but they are afraid. They're saying, oh, I wish I could help, but I'm afraid. Because if I do it, I am going to clash with X person from X organization and people try to make us feel as if we are wrong. But think about Jesus, huh? He's your guide and your model. Jesus is my guide and my model. Did any, any, any religious temple at the time vouched for what he was doing? No. Did he ask permission? No. Did Chico Xavier do that? No. So if you're not doing your part because of that, I'm sorry to tell you, when you go to the beyond, you won't be excused. Because that's not an excuse. Right, Carol? Right, of you, course. You want to say Jesus, something? Yes. Jesus is counting on all of us. Jesus doesn't have a VIP list. Jesus doesn't have pre-requirements. Jesus just has faith on us. And he is literally counting on each and every one of us, especially in this lands of the United States of America, where spiritists are few in the incarnate plane. So he is definitely counting on us and has a plan for each and every one of us. And so we shall march forward under his guidance, replacing fear by faith and trust in him. Thank you, Carol. You see, we have to talk about this because Mene is talking about this. The significance of others. So if I make this person more important because of the title that they have, I don't want people to treat me differently because I am a doctor. You know? No. I don't, I don't think that's the way we should behave. We are as important as anybody else. So that's number one in this message. Then she says, in truth, with some individuals, we can pick up on their difficulties and problems. Yet, with numerous others, we obtain the joys and blessings that ennoble our lives. So, in reality, she's saying, there will be people in our lives that will bring trouble, problems, difficulties. But there are many others that bring joy. Sometimes it's a dog and a cat. Dogs and cats count, okay? And plants and stones as well. Some people say, I'm so happy with my dogs. Good for you because they are living beings. They are children of God too. <laughs> right, so souls, a big hug to you, so. And I saw your comment in our t about our talk uh, in the about the Spirit Center yesterday, and I agree with you. Uh, people may misunderstand us, and you're right, but that's why we say. If that center doesn't fit, go to another. If there's no other, create your group. You don't need, you know, Chico Xavier never asked us 
to create a big center. Sometimes just a small group at home to cherish our mediumship. That's all it is. We don't need more than three people to do this group and do our mediumistic practice in harmony, in joy, but not doing it because of others is a no-no. We can't stop, okay? Look at Paul of Tarsus. So, there are many others who bring us joy, right, Yara Gouveia? Our dogs, our cats, the plants, and stones too. It's up to you. And it's up to all of us to decide who brings us joy because at the end of the day, it's about perception. Mm -hmm. And then she says, among others, we unexpectedly encounter gratuitous opponents who at times try to impede our steps forward. That exists. And if we say, oh Lord, why? There's no why. It's just the way it is, the nature of our planet. So still to evolve more. It's the nature of our planet. People are like this. Hopefully, we're not going to be the ones creating obstacles for others. Do you? Are there people trying to do good works and you are trying to create obstacles? And then we may say, no. But then they create a good project and out of spite or envy, we tell others, oh, I think they are trying to show off. That's a way we're creating obstacle for that, those people. So the problem is not if others are trying to create obstacles for us. The problem is if we are creating obstacles for others. Okay? Are we creating obstacles for others? In the lives of people? Sometimes it's a family member. Mm -hmm. That family member is different. And then I've seen parents who disagree with their children. And they tell the whole family. They badmouth their own children. And then you feel defeated. You feel like people don't understand me. Hmm? They play the, the nice person who is traditional, who does everything that the family wants. And then if you do something different, they badmouth you. It's so common. The problem is if we are that person. Are we that person? Are we creating obstacles in people's lives? Hmm? The other day, true account, huh? true account, friends. The other day there was a gathering, okay? And then this girl came, very sensual, in a meeting that didn't per pertain sensuality. And then this married guy, he really felt attracted by this. If I tell you the end of the story, you're gonna cry. But I tell you this, this girl doesn't know that her decision in her attitude before life being sensual at the wrong time created was the the stumbling block that put that couple to their own separation and this is just one story many and then we go home we don't feel good we don't know why and we ask did we do what saint augustine tell us to do Rewind the tape. Am I being coherent? Because if I'm trying to seduce people just out of power, making me feel like, you know, I attract attention wherever I am, 
destroying people's marriages without noticing. I'm creating karma. It's very sad, the story that I know from these friends. I'm not going to say that person is the sole reason, but it was the last drop. You don't want to be the last drop of a problem, do you? You don't want to be a problem in people's lives. I don't either. We've been there, done that in many lives. But in this life, we don't want it. And it inevitably, we're going to encounter those who are, feel like against us and try to block our pathway. However, may may say, please, Lord, help us come to understand the friends and the benefactors, the companions in ideal and work that collaborate with us in our accomplishments and relieve the tribulations of our path. We often focus on those who block our way, but then we don't value the many blessings of many people in our lives. So it's a choice that we make, like Divaldo Franco used to say, if a door is closed to you, look around. There may be many windows that are open. If I stay there just miserable because the doors are closed, I'm just wasting my time and energy. Exercise in the next 24 hours. We need exercise. Lifting the weight of the soul. And this is hard work, sincerely, because we haven't done this enough. So in the next 24 hours, let us all together do this, huh, Carol? Yes, remind us, course. huh? Let us remind each other. Okay, so instead of lamenting those who persecute us, those who abandon us, the, let us say, instead of looking at the lack, the glass half empty, let us look at the glass half full and say, oh, wow, this person is so adorable, that person or this or that situation, and let us practice it. It's not simple. Shall we do it? That's the exercise. We're going to bless. Bless those who are enemies. Bless those who go away. Bless those. And we say, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. But God bless those who stay, those who are faithful, who encourage us. As she says, those who collaborate and bring relief to our tribulations. Bless them. Okay, that's the exercise. She's going to say, Lord, some censure us, criticize us, while others stimulate us to fulfill the tasks you entrusted to us so okay some are gonna criticize and don't stop doing the good because people will criticize because that's the nature of things if you don't do it people will criticize you if you do it they're gonna criticize you so then do it okay how often we have a program mentor Joseph says this book that activity and then I said, oh, but I already know some people are going to say this. And he said, who cares? If Jesus is telling you to do, that's all that matters to you. They, these people are not your boss. Why are you giving them power? Huh? Right? John the Rose is saying a good expression. Let us good mouth everyone. <laughs> Love it, John. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's good mouth everyone. <laughs> what? Oh, John the Rosa. Right on. Mirella Campos is here with us. Welcome, Mirella. Big hug to you and the whole family. Right, sunshine. Exactly. We're working for God and nobody else. We're working for God, Sunshine is saying, for God's sakes, right? So what do we do? We remind ourselves, oh, I'm a co-creator, but this person is not my creator. They may be our critics, and that's their problem, not mine. 
they want to do that role, I won't. The problem is if we do this, I don't want to do that either. Some sway us to pessimism, yet others extend us cooperation, hope, courage, and affection. Some people are going to tell us, let's do the good. It's not simple, but let's do it. Others are going to say, don't do it. What do we do? We let them say we go with the other ones. Right? Right, so Sosa. That was a good one from John DeRose. Let us good mouth, everyone. From, and then may me say, oh, Lord, from the hands of some, we receive obstacles that alarm us for a few moments. However, from several others, we receive consolation, encouragement, appreciation, and approval in our everyday trials. Mm -hmm. Really, the trail of life. So, inevitably, and this is Mimi. Mimi is discarnated, and she's reporting that. You see how interesting these elevated spirits are because they don't sugarcoat. They bring the consolation, but they are bringing the truth. After all, spiritism is the light of discernment, and the light of discernment is the light of truth. We can't talk about these teachings without being truthful. When you see speakers, that are always saying jokes, always trying to be funny, as if they are comedians, spiritist comedians. But sincerely, it's okay to make a joke, but that's not our role to make people numb. No, we want to wake up consciences, our own, and say, friends, don't go to sleep yet. Because it's 11 p.m. program. Only after the program. Okay? We can't go to sleep. Mm -mm. Why? Right? If sometimes people say, Oh, you do a program at 11 p.m. That's too late. And they say, Well, don't you go to parties sometimes and they end up at 2 a.m.? Do you think that's too late? So why you can do that at a party and you can't do this? doing something that is beneficial to all of us. It's funny, isn't it? We're still incoherent. When a cloud of misfortune hangs over us, Lord, help us be humble, seeking the help from compassionate hearts that prompt us to also become contributors, donors of peace and security, of which we're all in need to live according to your will. So we need to be humble, ask for help. Ask for help. Scale zero to 10, let's evaluate. Do you have a hard time asking for help? Zero being super hard time. 10 being super easy for me to ask for help. Where are we? Because I'm not, a saying that we need to be beggars? No, but we need to ask for help when we need help. And that takes humility. Help from God, help from Jesus, help from friends, help from family, help from colleagues, sometimes from people in the street. Right? Where is our humility? Life is gonna be so much easier. Some people, I observe that they have a hard time. And you know why? Because they are so egotistic, full of pride, that they avoid asking for help. Go to the book 2,000 years ago. At the end of André de Giora's life, in an exchange dialogue with Publius Lentulus, he says, Publius Lentulus asked him, why didn't you come back to me and ask me to release your son? 
because he knew that his son was a slave in his best friend's house, Flaminius. He could have gone back and said, please, my son ended up being a slave there. Can you please help release him? What was Andrea de Giora's answer? Well, Senator, like yourself, I'm also full of pride. That pride didn't allow me to ask for help. How many families break apart because of pride? I'm not going to ask him or her because I don't want to be the one giving the first step. If they do it, then I will. And then years go by, decades go by. And I remember once a woman who was not a spiritist, we were helping in her last weeks of life. And she said, I spent decades of my life battling with my sister. Now that I am a deathbed, I wanna I want her to come here. And I want us to make amends. They succeeded at talking through Skype only, but the sister didn't make it here. No time. What are we waiting? Do our part. If people don't do theirs, it's not your problem. Write that letter that you have been thinking about. Make that phone call. Communicate, friends. Communication means an action in common. Okay? So it's like bring that commonality to the present. Make yourself equal. Okay? If that person today is not ready to be with you at the same level, one day they will. You bet. Inevitably. But you, are, you already did. When you discarnate, that is not in your to-do list. So what is in your to-do list? Let us observe and do this quickly, okay? So May May continues in the last two paragraphs. When a cloud of misfortune, as we were saying, hangs over us, let's ask for help. Lord, whatever may happen on the part of some in order to weaken our energies on the road towards self-improvement. Help us find others through our acceptance of our smallness, of our meekness, so that we may not lack the opportunities of service, improvement, learning, renewing today and always. If some people come and try to make us weak, they come and say, oh, you're spiritist. Who hasn't heard this, huh? You're a spiritist, and you're saying this, or you're doing that. They make you feel so small, right? Many people come to me and say, Oh, I can no longer give talks because my family members say this. And I said, well, you can't stop because they say what they say, but you can adjust yourself there and continue this work. Continue this work serving that is going to strengthen you. If you stop this, you have no strength to work on this relationship. Because when somebody comes to you and puts you down in that way, it's a sign that you're not on the same page. Because when we love somebody, we don't do this. We don't put them down. Them down. We don't. If we do, it's because we are not on the same page. Ah, Karina Alice is saying, ask for scholarships all the time. <laughs> Adorable, so Karina. If I find a benefactor, I'll give your name first. <laughs> okay? 
here. Scholarship here in Virginia. Yes. Right, Carol? Right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so help. So if people try to do that, what do you do? Stop? No. Help. Ask the help of Jesus. So we accept our smallness. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. People are going to say, oh, you do this. You try to help ours, but you don't help at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember a teenager in Brazil. She would wake up on Sundays to give spiritist lessons to children in the suburbs, in the at-risk areas. And her mother used to say, oh, you're going to do charity and you're going to leave us here at home. But they were wealthy. Why did she need to be home? Would she stop because the mother was trying to put her down? No. She kept on walking and working on the opportunities to serve, to improve, to learn, to renew. So before others, do the good, do the good, do the good, do the good. Right, Carol? Right. Do the good, right, Carol? Yes, do the good, feel the good, visualize the good, put the good into action, do it. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Do the good mood. If people say, but you, Thank you, and you, and me, and all of us. And just say, God takes care of us, but I am a co-creator. I cannot stop co-creating, right? This message is fantastic. It's empowering. So after today, our exercise is to focus on the good, on those who help us, those who encourage us, who stimulate us, those who trust in us, focus on them. If a bug comes and says, it's almost like a buzz, like zzz. you don't understand what that means. You just understand the voice that says, you're adorable, continue doing the good, do the good, do the good, do the good, do the good, just the horse, do the good, do the good, do the good. If the bee comes and bzzz, the fly, right? The fly. The bee is good, but the fly, mamma mia. <laughs> Child of God, but in the works. We don't hear it, okay? So, right. Here we are, dear friends. This is May May teaching us, praying with us to God. Thank you, May May Blandina, for your presence in our lives, for your team of educators, preparing us for new grounds in the education of our souls, in the education of the world. We thank you for listening to the call of the Master, sharing it with us, and for the beloved Chico Xavier, who never abandoned any of us, and through his works, we are here united together. Thank you, God. And we pray tonight specially for the children, the refugees, the children of the refugees, the refugee children separated from the families or with their families awaiting for a better opportunity. Please protect them, guide them, send them what they need, and make us stronger so we can take action and be better contributors to common sense, to discernment on earth. We pray for the leadership of the world in many countries. May all the presidents, kings, pharaohs, and whatever they name themselves, 
feel your embrace and the call to do the good as well. And so be it. Thank you, friends. Until tomorrow, God willing, because after all, God awaits. Right, Carol? All right. Beautiful night for the master, friends. Thank you. Have a beautiful night. And until tomorrow, God willing.